H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, configuration manager dot app settings dot get. I can get here the connection string. So I need to give this uh, case sensitive. So always I suggest you to copy it from the web.config file. Copy this and put it here and then we can actually get this. Okay. Now I have this connection now, connection string. Okay. So now what I'll do, I'll add a method. So I will add a method here, public uh public data set so what is the namespace for data set uh, let me put control dot and enter so i'm getting it so i need public data set uh, uh, get employee details or get department details okay so now what I what this method will do is uh, you'll write a command. So I already have connection string there. So so what I'll do here is um, I'll write a command also here so that I can reuse it. So public connection SQL connection. Why I'm not getting? So this also I need to add the namespace. So so let me delete it just a second. So I need to include the namespaces proper name, all the namespaces. So let me include that. So using system dot data dot SQL client. Okay. So now I, I have added. So what I'll do here: public SQL connection con equal to new SQL connection. And actually, I can give the connection string here. So what is the connection string? I have above. So what I can do here, connection string. Okay, so now I am done with this connection string. Now, what do I, what else I need now? Just a second. got it okay uh, now I'm getting the value here so now now what I need here uh, I need uh, to get the values from the database so I need a kind of command so SQL command CMD is equal to what is the command to get from department table CMD is equal to so we can call we need to call a store pressure here but now let's try to let instead of store pressure let me write it here so select star from uh, department so this will give me the complete uh, details so what I need to do here so to populate this command uh, I think you already remembered the steps we have so let me put those steps first thing connection and then command and then data adapter and then data set so now connection we have already have it connection so we have the connection okay so I made it global so I made this I have written the connection here so that other classes can reuse it I don't want to put it in inside every method so if I put it here above this methods I can use it in all the methods even I can use it in get employee details method also this connection so that's the reason I made it outside the methods I have not written inside here so connection is done so what is the command command is this one so let me copy this control X and put it here okay I'm writing the command here so now this SQL command I need to write like this new SQL command and I can I can actually put here inside this I need to put uh, string command text and connection so what is my string command so I need right here select star from 
select star from department and then what I need to write here comma and we need to write here connection so CYNN connection done and then after that what I need to do I'm done with the command I give the table name and I give the connection to it I'm done with the command now so when we are using data adapter you don't need to open the connection it will open the connection for you automatically so what do you need to do SQL data adapter DA is equal to new SQL data adapter and inside this you need to provide command what is your command CMD now what is the data set so you have to declare data set data set DS uh, DS department is equal to new data set and then what you need to do fill the data set fill the data set from from using using data adapter okay so how to fill uh, da dot fill ds department that's all when we are done with this return uh, return ds department okay so we are done with method uh, this method will get the department details now what we need we need the method to get the employees based on department so we need a method here we need to write another one public data set get depart get employee details by department ID okay so this is important so now what we need to hear int department ID see here uh, now what we do we d we need to write the same thing connection we already have it so we can reuse the code here so what do we what is our command select star from employee where EMP ID is equal to you need to write here uh, you need to write here employee ID is equal to plus uh, department ID DEPT ID so this is actually department ID okay so is it the same department ID yeah it is department ID so what we are doing here this method will get the department ID as parameter and it will write the query select star from employee where department ID equal to this and then comma connection and data adapter same and data set is also same and uh, DS we will give like this DS uh, employee and we'll write here DS uh, DS employee and we'll return DS employee okay we're done so so we are done with this get department details and we are done with get employee details by department ID so we have two methods and these methods ideally we should have created a separate project uh, called uh, separate uh, console library I mean separate class library um, as we saw in the three tier architecture project but I just created here my DB class so let me rebuild this okay we are done so now my DB class is here so I'll go to this uh, what is the namespace for my DB class web application 53 and what is the namespace for this dot uh, CS file web application 53 so ideally I should get the uh, my DB class okay I'm getting okay so what I'll do here I will make this methods as static methods so so that I don't need to create an object so public static get department details and here I'll make this static so now I can access this methods directly uh, class name dot get department details class name dot get employee details by department ID so what I'll do here I'll go to this one now what I need to do is populate populate the department drop-down okay so now I need to populate the department drop-down first so where is my department here I have this department okay now let's see how to populate the drop-down for the first time we are seeing how to populate a drop-down list so now so data set so let me write this here using system dot data okay so now um, data set DS uh, DS departments is equal to my DB class dot get department details that's all 
so now this will give me the department details so now I need to this is a table so so now I need to loop through it and I need to add it so now for where um, where item in DS department or or rows for each EMP row in DS department of dot tables of of zero. I'll tell you why we need to put this. Okay, in this dot rows. So every row you have to take it from this. Okay, so I'll tell this. Don't worry if you're not getting it. So why this is having like this? Okay, we need to write a for it. Sorry. Yeah. So for each uh, where, and I need to write here dot rows. Okay, every row I'm taking row by row in this, and then um, and then what I need to do here is I need to assign this to I need to add that to the list item. So what is the uh, what is the drop down list name? DDL um, DDL department dot items dot add. Okay, I need to add new list item, new list item, and then I will put here like this. Okay, so what is that? Um, um, we need to have text text is equal to uh, we need to have we have two columns right in department so we need to write like this EMP row of uh, uh, what is that um, column name we need to put here uh, comma and value we need to have EMP row of we need to put here so now so what is the text so text is if you go to the SQL server so if you see here department this is the text department name so DAPT name and other one is DAPT ID so let me go back here so for text I need to put here DAPT name for value I will put here DAPT ID so I'll tell you why so now we are done so now let me give here data row what is the type of this here data row so we have here data row yeah now this will go uh, data row in this 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 and then why we are not getting here this one so data row ideally we should get it column name so we should get it okay so what is the type of this this is actually object so but this is actually a string so what you need to do here dot to string both left side and right side you need to have both the same data types okay so we are done that's how we need to add the elements okay so that's all this is a code to add the values from um, so I'll explain this now so anyway we wrote the method get department details that department details will return a data set so a data set is a comb a data set is like a group of tables so we can have one table we can have two tables like that so we saw in the previous class like if you have a semicolon here and then you have some other select statement we'll get two tables so as of now I have only one cell query so I'll get only one table so for that one table so index is zero so department dot tables of zero because index of that starts from zero and then I'm taking rows so number of rows so I'm looping it every row I'm adding that into into this DDL department so DDL department I'm adding the values into this so let me run this and see how it looks like so if we get any error we'll correct it so let me run this so we have we got some error what is that error we'll correct it now uh, my DB class and object reference is required for non static so where is it okay so it is mentioned as connection string so let me make this as connect static So we made the methods are static. So let let me make this. So let me rebuild this now. Okay. So let me run this project. So ideally, we should see department until and unless if we get any error in the connection string, if the data source or any connection string is wrong, it will not work. So let's see. Yeah. Ideally, it should not take this much time. Let's see. Uh, 
yeah so we got an error so what is the error now uh, my company requested by login login failed so now looks like the login has failed uh, cannot open the database my company so I should have given without space in the in web.config so let me change it to uh, my company so database name uh, you should not put space here okay so let me run this okay good now I'm getting an error saying like um, cannot open database my company requested by login login failed again it is showing login failed. let me rebuild it the previous error ha only has executed now let me rebuild this and run this now let's see whether we get any error now so this is how you need to rectify your errors uh, uh, even sometimes you might need to do research now so now I'm getting another error a default document not configured for the URL okay so okay so I need to mention a startup page so I need to right click on this employee details right click on this set a startup page now let me run this ideally I should not get these types of forbidden errors but anyway so I'm getting the department here so I'm getting IT and admin so now now on selecting this IT and I I should actually get this uh, value here so so before that normally let me let me do some quick formatting here so let me add a br tag and br tag and then what we normally have is we will have a something called select department so before entering into this what you need to do you know uh, you need to write like this so you need to write uh, ddl department dot items dot add you need to write uh, new new item you need to write like this so text is equal to select department okay and then comma value is equal to you need to write uh, 0 comma selected is equal to true okay so the reason why you need to give this is uh, you should actually have um, you should see that people should know that you have to select department so for example when you run this now okay this should be in zero okay no problem so let me run this now now you can see here select department so you can select here like this now the question is when I select this automatically I should see the employees here for that what you need to do here is you need to make sure you need to change one add one attribute uh, for the so till now is it clear all of you how you are populating uh, the drop down list from the tape from the database any questions here uh, all of you any questions here I don't see any response yeah okay so first thing we have a database layer so where we have a method get department details okay so the purpose of this uh, get department details is we are getting select star from employee okay so this select star from department will give you the table details department complete department details now what we are doing here we came to this page and what we are doing we are calling that method get department details method and here we are writing uh, this is a drop down list you have to add the elements to the drop down list so how we are adding elements first I added one element say for example select department so this is one element I added because the first one you need to have like this select department and then I have written a for each loop for each loop I have written and then I have written uh, I'm getting each row from this table first row I got it I added that uh, first row to the drop down list so it will add first IT department then it will loop again and now it will add the second one which is that is this is the code which we we have we need to add for populating the department drop down element by element we are adding to drop down that's all it's straightforward so one is text and one is value okay so the reason why we added text and value is so when you run this code you can see here right click on this view source 
if you see view source you will see here that uh, I have value 1 value 2 and value 0 this is to differentiate which one you have selected this value only we need to pass to get the we need to part this value to get the um, uh, to get the respective employee okay so that is the reason why we have this value here and we have this text text is to display so we are at item and uh, text and value is it clear all of you now how many of you got it okay so I got only one response from Mona how about others yeah so can you drop down the select department yeah uh, not from here the page yeah from the web page okay I'm talking about the output not from here okay Can you click on the drop down? Yeah. So what happens when I click on IT? Now nothing will happen. We have to write the code. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I'm talking so about whether you understood till yeah. here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, my question is whether all of you understood till populating this drop down, first drop down. Don't worry about the second one. We are yet to write the code. Okay. Is it clear, all of you? I'm not getting the response from others. Okay. Selected equal to true. It means like whatever select we are selecting in the drop box is has to be true. Yeah, uh, that is selected. Good question. The selected equal to true will make sure will ensure that this one is selected by default. Uh, you want only this one to be t when the page loaded. You want this one to be selected, right? Because people yeah. people should see like okay, select a department from this. So that's the reason why we made selected true. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, now, now what we need to do is we have to add an attribute for this one called auto post back equal to true. So now, what I need to do here for this drop down list, I need to add an attribute called auto post back equal to true. So when you when you put this auto post back true, what happens is every time when you change something, it will fire an event. So I go to the design. I I'll go to the design view I made for this one I made auto post back true and I'm now double clicking on this so let me double click on this now it added selected index changed event so selected index changed event I need to write the code so what is that code I let me copy this copy paste this so what I'm doing here DS department I don't have I don't want DS department now DS employee so what is that I need to get here draw get employee details by department ID and what is that department ID department ID is the value which I selected in the drop down list of that one so DDL uh, employee DDL department dot uh, DDL department dot items dot selected we have something called selected items or selected index so here selected value or selected index or selected item we have three things so so if you're selected item dot or selected value let me put here okay so let's assume uh, what is this this is a string or what this is a string so so we need to convert this to integer so let me put here convert dot to int okay so now I'll explain this now so what we are trying to get is from the drop down list based on the value which is selected you need to pass that to the uh, to this method get employee details okay so now are you able to hear me now all of you Ravi you're able to hear me okay 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 now um, for this method I want to pass uh, for this department ID I want to pass which employee uh, uh, for this method I want to pass which department I was selected in the previous drop down so for that I mentioned DDL department dot selected value now I need to give here I don't need to give select department here so and then what I need to do I need to put it here DDL employee right DDL employee dot items dot add so I don't want this one now because I don't have to put select employee or something so now what I need to add here I need to write DS employee so let me copy this and paste it here 
and uh, and here DDL DDL depart uh, DDL employee right that's all we are adding an employee table and what is this uh, I need to add text text is I need to add employee name so let me put it this one employee name where is this and here what is that value of that one EMP ID that's all very simple see now so all I'm doing is I'm getting the value so let let me put a breakpoint here and verify whether I'm getting the proper selected value or not say for example let me run this now I'm actually getting departments so let me select IT department and now it will fire the event because I made auto post back true and what is that is coming here selected value okay it's coming as one so I selected ID uh, so I selected IT department so it's coming one so let me press F5 so I am getting an error here so uh, what is that error cannot have multiple items selected in the in the drop down list okay so what we need to do you know um, here I need to put here DDL employee dot items dot selected index is equal to zero let me put like this okay so let me run this I'll tell you why we got that error so we are selecting IT department ideally we should not get this let me close it text is equal to DS employee okay data row okay so we are looping through this rows and adding this to this okay let me put a breakpoint and see what is the error we are getting let me run this so let me select the IT department so we game here press F10 press F10 so now so we have ideally we should have the first uh, let me see what is there in the tables so we should have two employees so employee ID 1 ok employee ID 1 I have so I need to change uh, employee ID ok I have it employee ID 1 and employee ID 2 I have uh, uh, Rajesh and Sankar so it should be fine so this is the values which I am getting from database so but ideally I should not get right I should only get for that ID so I'm getting something wrong here because I should only get one employee okay both belongs to the uh, IT department so that's right so press F10 okay I wrote this inside this okay let me press F10 so now I need I added this other item and then press F10 okay so it is, it is fine why I am getting error cannot have multiple items selected in a top down ok ok let me run this for which drop down we are getting error here so let me select admin which drop down okay 
so we'll do one thing let me put it like this okay so let's see whether this works but but you got you got idea now how to now see how it happens so this is how you need to populate only thing is for the first drop down list you need to add auto post back true and then you need to double click on that so let me press F5 cannot have multiple items selected in drop down list I'm not selecting multiple items but still we are getting this error so why we are getting this so DDL DS employee dot rows okay and we are adding it here and are we getting same employee ID no we are not getting same employee ID okay okay yeah it is from this okay I got it uh, thank you for uh, Padmini so what I need to do you know I need to add this here if not post back so if page dot is post back I'll tell this what is this page post back I think I already discussed but let me put this here we need to populate this only for the first time when the page is loaded so so now let me run this now yeah now we will get it for sure 100% anyway I'll explain this again so admin department now I go I'm getting this breakpoint let me press F5 now for which one we are getting just a second okay I need to change this DDL DDL employee now this is not required I'm 100% sure now we should not get any error let me run this I'm running out of time. Let me run this. Okay. I'll select IT department. You will see Rajesh and Sinkar. I'll select admin department. And okay. You should only see Bharat. So, what we need to do, you know, you need to actually on selected index change, you need to clear the elements. So, here DDL employee dot items dot clear otherwise what will happen now the previous values will be there as it is let me run this so now I'm selecting IT department I'm seeing Rajesh and Sankar now I'm selecting admin department I'm seeing Bharat only Bharat is there now I'm selecting IT I have Rajesh and Sankar okay so anyway I'll explain this again in the next class for 5 to 10 minutes so uh, how many of you understood this Yeah, Padmini, I think you already have some knowledge. So how about others? Anyone understood this? See, what we are doing here, we are just, uh, the reason why I have made this as East Post back is every time when you click on, when a drop-down list are selected or anything changes, this page load event will be fired automatically. So anyway, I'll explain this again. I'll have this project as, as it is. Okay. So that's all for today. Uh, uh, in the next class, I'll, I'll join on time. We'll try to complete this. Uh, uh, any doubts we have, we'll try to complete and we'll proceed with the pending topics. We'll try to complete this in this week and, uh, and we'll try to work on the project uh, in the, in the, for the next week. So I'll give the, explain the project requirements and I'll give you one week time and we'll connect again after one week. So we're almost done. So we'll quickly refresh in the next class all the topics and then we'll, com we'll try to proceed on the pending topics. Okay. So Ravi, did you get some idea on, this is your question, right? Which you asked a uh, couple of weeks back. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah. So I'll explain thank this you. again in the beginning of the next class. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much. I need to start another class now. Uh, so.